If I may, I know our encounter with the hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? Because he was stopping us, implying that we were getting closer to it. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus's speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but... Why not talk to him? It's right here in the city, just a block or so from the lodge. There's no harm in gathering more information. A visit to the Sanctum might actually be quite enlightening. Thank you. I know it's not much to go on, but something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. Hey, fix the damages. Some things are irreplaceable. The lodge feels a little colder than it used to. to think that this tree predates New Atlantis. Mm. Can you imagine all the changes it's seen? someone insults you, you want to just beat the shit out of them. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Oh, Mateo, it's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh, well, what's on both your minds? Keeper, we were hoping to talk to you about... Unity. <laughs> you want to subject your friend here to one of our talks, Matteo? The future of humanity is always a long discussion. No, that's not exactly what I meant. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well... Does it mean anything else? Something... Secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside. Have you ever heard one of his sermons? They're really good. Now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? We've lost people, Keeper. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. 
And these Starborn, I take it they're different from the people of the settled systems? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path of discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but maybe it's more. In my story, the Pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun, and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code? A way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave. But what if it does? Not my version, obviously, but the House of Enlightenment. Varun. I've spoken to them before, but I never thought of scrutinizing their answers for clues. The enlightened work out of the well here in New Atlantis helping the poorest citizens find a better life for themselves. The rune worshippers are more enigmatic, but there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions. Varun abandoned their embassy. Mm. I bet we could have learned a lot from one another. across most of the settled systems in all manners of spacecraft, and yet I still get sick on the night. Ah, oh, I've always liked that statue.
beautiful, isn't it? Hmm. I wonder what the artist was trying to represent. A visitor? I have all the company I need. Jokes. <laughs> you come to hear about Varun. Like the guards. Like the Keeper. I don't think it was a joke. It was an attempt at some genuine sympathy. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. Yes, I do as well. We both like to keep an open mind. The knowledge of the Great Serpent sweeps away all concern. There is only his inevitable return, and those he will spare. Nothing else. You wish to speak of the Keeper's Pilgrim, do you not? I will tell you of him, and then you will leave. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down, but the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan. The Unbeliever says, remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Strength and conviction show your worthiness to the Great Serpent. The kill is not as important as showing there is no doubt. I grow tired of speaking. Leave me. We have nothing more to discuss. No, I have told you what I will. Everything else is between me and the Great Serpent. The Great Serpent called me to fight the Unbelievers in the United Colonies. But I was ambushed, and my ship disabled. Now, I am here. Contrary to what you might have heard, you see security personnel are good people. And Sergeant Yumi just happens to be an old friend. Why miss him? Sure they had something we can use.
it's to your brother's place. Everything good? We're here to help. I used to drink. Then, if it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, you're not. Sorry. Can I help you? We don't mean to be intrusive. Any information you could provide would be very useful. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a unity pilgrim. But since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. Yeah, I mean, he's always going on about trying to bring people of all beliefs together. Really wants there to be some shared story or origin. Look, I like the Keeper, but belief is the problem, okay? We don't need a shared narrative or theology. We need to help each other in practical terms. <laughs> we might actually have some, but uh, anyway. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no. The Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. It's part of our core principles. There's no God pushing us to do good for some eternal reward. We have to help each other because we choose to. If no one takes responsibility for making the settled systems better, then we're just leaving it to the tyrants to bully the rest of us. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Besides what the Keeper would say about it? Sounds like a gathering point, or a center. Or, in mathematics, it would mean one, like the one, the first or the beginning. Sorry, I couldn't be of more help, but that's about all I've got. Hope you find what you're looking for. Nice talking to you. Hope you find whatever it is you're looking for. We started as an intellectual movement built around atheism. As our numbers increased, we began focusing on humanitarian efforts and showing what humanity can achieve when we work together. We don't exactly pass around an offering plate, if that's what you're asking. But we do run mostly on donations. And as you might have guessed from the surroundings, we try and stretch those donations as far as we can. Take care.
me to be a doctor. How's everything with you? I'm doing okay. how many credits flow through this place. Figuratively, of course. Well, you're back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. What else did you learn? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Well, I suppose that'll make someone laugh. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum. At four and one hundred twenty. That's where you'll find the Pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? Conviction, another word for strength. Can the truth not be revealed to the weak? Someone with doubts. So that's your intention. Your friends, your companions, all of them, will be swept along to the answer by the might of your forward momentum? 
No one is swept along, Keeper. At Constellation, we operate as a team. Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. Shortly after I evacuated, I saw the ship come apart. The UC listed it as lost, so I assume the Dauntless was completely destroyed. The Dauntless took heavy fire to the docking section during the battle. We had three shuttles. One was destroyed, and the other two were damaged. There was no other way off the ship. It was a 50-50 shot, and they lost the gamble. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely, or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I wouldn't call what I did a soft landing, but thank you all the same. Don't worry, it's not as though I'm coming apart at the seams. It's the conversations we've been having. They dredged up these old memories and they're a burden. That's what I was hoping, but I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Mm. 
Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look, I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, I'll never understand. I don't know what to say. Ah, oh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just not ready. Not yet. Yes, you're absolutely right. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. We should have a talk, when you have the time, of course. Look. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you. The fact that you risked your life to save me, I... I don't know what to say. Well, yes, of course. But that's beside the point. My only wish is that my rescue hadn't come at the expense of Barrett's life. He was one of my closest colleagues, and a cherished friend. <laughs> oh, he always knew how to make me laugh. <laughs> I'll miss him dearly. <laughs> I really wish I could believe that. Our charter at Constellation has always been to analyze the unknown but rarely at the expense of our members' lives. Yet all the while, I've been cavalier about taking risks and pushing the boundaries, not appreciating the true cost of my actions. Had I not pushed so hard to pursue the Starborn, perhaps none of this would have happened at all and Barrett would still be alive. Of course I can. Damn it! Why is this happening to us? We're explorers. Our curiosity pushes us to seek answers to life's mysteries. It's one of the core traits of humankind. Yet in return, this is what the universe throws at us. Beings from God knows where who are trying to murder us. Why? What have we done wrong? I understand why you're saying that, but I can't just turn my back on the universe like that. It's not who I am. The question is, where do we go from here? Do we stop exploring? Stop pushing the boundaries? Take a more aggressive posture towards the universe? 
I don't know where to begin. Agreed. I just hope it's enough caution that we don't leave ourselves open to another attack. Well, I suppose that's all I had on my mind for now. Oh, it was a relief to get all of that out in the open. I'm sorry I got so angry. But I assure you, it's nothing personal. You're the only one I feel comfortable talking with about these things. Good, because I expect this won't be the last time I intend to cry on your shoulder or scream in your face. Well, we have a long road ahead of us. I suppose it's high time we get back to work. <laughs>